Hello everyone, it's Nat here, and today I have a video for you on sampling in GarageBand. Actually, it's a little, it's going to be a mini series, three uh, videos on sampling, because there are three very different ways that you can sample. In this first video, I would like to show you how you can take a pre-recorded piece of music or a field recording or um, any bit of audio really, and turn that into a loop so you can use it in your own music production. So first of all, we need to find some audio that we can actually sample. And this can be very tricky um, to find some audio, uh, audio that you're allowed to use. So I would highly suggest um, creating your own audio, recording friends, bands, getting a digital recorder, a uh, high quality digital recorder, making some field recordings, um, and uh, even getting, you know, if you have some friends who are producers, seeing if they can give you some of their old tracks that they didn't use or just anything like that, then you know you're never going to have any problems. Uh, the other way you can do it is search the internet for Creative Commons Music. And you can, um, you know, go through all these different uh, various websites and um, find some Creative Commons Music, which means you can use the music. Some of the licenses are Creative Commons Attribution, so you can use it as long as you attribute the person who created it. Um, and then the full Creative Commons means it's it's in the public domain and you can use it even without um, attributing the original composer. So I uh, use freesound.org. I tend to always attribute uh, if I've used someone else's audio. So all I've done is I've searched for uh, some funk music on this freesound.org, and I'll leave the link to this in the description of this video. I came across a little... Uh, uh, funk kind of jam that I really liked and um, I downloaded it uh, I don't know whether this is it but you can see here um, that this all you need to do is search uh, for style of music and then I tend to click creative commons full creative commons and then anything that you find uh, here this is the one I used you can see this work is licensed under creative commons and it will give you a description there basically showing that it is in the public domain. So I've downloaded that. Uh, you need an account uh, with freesound.org. It's free to join. Uh, it's a really good site. And I've got a garage band session, um, brand new session with just an audio track. And this is the file here. I'm going to drag that in onto that audio. I'm actually going to pop it on a new track. And it will create one for me. And I'll delete the original track. Okay. So now uh, let's have a quick listen to what we have here. So it's a little uh, funky piece, and I think the person said they originally created this in GarageBand. So I've listened through this, and I found a little section of audio just here that I think would be good as a loop. And because uh, we can hear that this is, has a rhythm to it, um, what I want to do is get this on locked onto a grid uh, as soon as possible so I can create a loop that I can use uh, in a composition. So let's find um, this little section here. Um, I want that to start right on a bar. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to shuffle that little transient right there and try and get that right bang on the start of a bar. If, if you don't have a clear start to your song, I can see there, right there, if I go zoom in a bit, like that is the start of a bar. So if you wanted to, you could line that particular transient up. Um, and But I'm just, this one actually starts bang on a beat. So that's really handy if it does that. I'm going to pop that at the start. Let's have a listen with this metronome on up here. See whether we can figure out the beats per minute of this track. Okay, so I can hear that that metronome is outpacing the song. So I'm going to pull this down. Let's try, uh, let's try one, one ten. See whether we can get any closer to finding out the beats per minute. Okay, so now the track is outpacing the click. So let's just go up to one fifteen. See if we can get any closer to that. That sounds pretty good. Um, I tend to go a bit later on to see if it's still on the grid. It's a little bit off. 
Let's try 116. So I just have to readjust it. So we're right at the start. Okay, that sounds good. So now I'm going to trim the back by going on the bottom right hand corner and trim the left by the bottom left hand corner and see whether we can just find a two bar loop out of this. Cool. So there we go. That's a two bar loop. And I'm going to engage this cycle region by clicking here. So I'll loop that without the metronome to see if it sounds good. Beautiful. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is double click on that, um, the top of this region to open up the editor. And I want to uh, enable the flex audio under track. And under the region, I want to make sure that the follow tempo and pitch is on. And then I'm going to do a little time quantize. So I'm going to select 16th notes. And then that's going to line up all the transients to the closest 16th note. Let's see whether this is still on the grid and it still sounds good. That's, uh, that's good enough for me at this point. So. Now we have ourselves a loop that we can use in any other um, composition or any other song that we're making. And I want to add that to my loop library. So right here, we've got the Apple loop library, but you can actually drag a loop that you've made yourself and drop it in there and give it a name. Um, so let's call that funk jam loop one and create. And because we've got this follow time and pitch and the flex audio on, um, I should be able to now find that in my Apple Loops library. Um, so funk jam, there it is there. So now that loop is a permanent part of my uh, loop library and that's my loop. I created it um, from Creative Commons so I can use it happily and release the song, even sell it. Um, if I want to create a new track, um, I might save that. If I want to create a new track um, and start building a song around that um, sample, I can just grab that straight from the loop library over here. And the cool thing is that it will now conform to any beats per minute that I've got. So if I drag that in onto an audio track, so I can put it up to 130 beats per minute if I want. Or I can go down to 100 beats per minute. And um, I can build a track around that. I can even um, change the key of that. Um, if I double click on the region and I go to, let's have a look. Down on the region, there's a transpose. If I can change the audio down to semitones. And I can start building building a track around that. So, if I wanted to add a uh, add some drums to that, I'll pop in a software instrument. I could pick an electronic drum kit. Let's go. Uh, let's try indie disco. So I don't have a MIDI keyboard hooked up at the moment. So I'm just going to go to Window and select Show Musical Typing. Um, I can just click it in with my mouse. So I'm going to go down an octave by hitting that, this little minus here. There we go. I'm going to give myself a one bar lead in and record some drums.
Okay, not the greatest performance there, but it doesn't matter because we've got MIDI. I'm going to double click on this region. I'm going to go in, select all of those MIDI notes that I just hit, and I'm going to quantize them to 16th notes. I'm going to make that one there a snare. I need to add in a, another kick, so I'm going to hold down the Option button and drag one of these kicks over. It's going to duplicate it. Let's see whether that's all right. Let's loop this region. Almost. Okay, not the most amazing of uh, compositions I'm making here, but I'm just using this to show you how quickly and easily you can start building a track around a sample um, that you've found. So um, I can create a bass line if I like by grabbing a software instrument and finding uh, maybe a synth bass from here. Um, let's see what we've got. Metro bass, what's that? All right, that'll do. Let's record that. Let's have a listen to that, and let's go in and do the same thing. Let's quantize that MIDI. Just going to grab that one note. Make these ones a bit longer. Cool. So the great thing now that uh, we can make changes to the key and the tempo and all these loops will uh, follow along. So if I make this faster, if I go back to that 115 beats per minute by changing the tempo in this panel up here. And I'm um, pretty sure we can do a global transpose by changing it from C major. Let's go up two. Or we can change it down a semitone. So you can see that this global transpose is working quite well. Because we got the flex audio on that loop, it's, it's flexing with the global changes. The other way we can do it, I'm going to pop it back to where we were. I'll make it a bit slower. Let's make it 105 beats per minute. Uh, the other way we can do it is go in double... Um, Double click on the region so we've got the editor open and we can use that little transpose now. I'm bringing it up a semitone and on the, if I click on the region on the MIDI tracks, I can do a transpose on those as well. I could go in and change all the notes, but that this is a quick way of transposing. And then let's uh, let's just make it sound a bit a uh, bit nicer with a bit of effects and some mastering.
So there you go. That's how you can grab uh, some external audio and create it into a loop and then store it in your loop library and then start building your own compositions, uh, having sampled that work and be completely in the clear as far as copyright goes, because that is a Creative Commons piece. And uh, I've just, there I was just throwing some quick effects on and showing how you can master a track and do some quick mixing. If you would like to learn more about GarageBand, I have a brand new course uh, called How to Use GarageBand, The Complete Guide. And I show you absolutely everything from all of the basics to building a track up, mixing it, mastering it up to commercial quality loudness so that you can then um, release your track happily uh, onto Spotify, iTunes, throw it up on YouTube and it will sound big, fat, loud, all the good stuff. Um, and uh, that's available now on Udemy. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm also uh, taking on students at the moment. I have a mentorship program. And um, if you would like to uh, have me as your mentor, I can help you with your own mixes and your own music productions. I'll leave some information in the description of this video also. So I hope you enjoyed this content and uh, keep an eye out for two more videos coming up soon uh, on sampling. And I'll show you how you can take a sample and break it out onto a MIDI keyboard and also how you can construct your own um, drum kit using samples in GarageBand as well. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.